Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing well today and I hope your weekend has been a great one. Now today we're going to be talking about arrows and more specifically how to customize your arrows to suit your own taste. And we're going to dive into that right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back. Now, before I get started with this video, I want to take a few minutes and say thank you to all my new subscribers. I really appreciate you watching my content and really supporting my channel by, by subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate that. And also the comments that you guys have left on the content that I've been posting. Thank you so much. I try to get back to each and every comment. So anytime I post something new, please comment on it. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. And I'll always get back to you on the comments. I do appreciate it. Again, I can't thank you enough for that. That being said, let's dive into this week's content. Now, normally when you go to the store to pick up arrows, you pick up something like this, something that's pre-made, ready to go, has the fletching on, and has the knocks installed. The only thing you really have to do to it is add your field tip or your broadhead, and you're ready to shoot. Now, what if you want to customize those arrows? What if you want to make them your own? Well, in the traditional archery world, that's a process known as cresting, where you can actually take your arrows and put any design that you want to on them and personalize making them your own. Now, the thing about these arrows here, uh, this arrow is really too uh, heavy for my, my 40 pound uh, traditional archery recurve bow, so I can't really use it, but I can shoot this out of my compound, which I don't really shoot my compound that much anymore. Uh, but these come with plastic veins. Now, plastic veins are great if you're shooting off an elevated rest, such as that in a compound, or you can use these off an elevated rest on a recurve bow as well. But if you're shooting off the shelf, you're going to want to get rid of those. So that's the first thing you're going to have to do is strip those veins off. Now, I just use a standard, a standard box cutting knife. These work great as long as you take and you hold the the blade, if you can see here, just level with this because the last thing you want to do is dig into the carbon or dig into the aluminum whenever you're stripping off the veins. And then the rest is just a process of just straight blade scraping them off. Of course, that's just rudimentary. But So once you get your arrow stripped down, you're left with just a plain arrow shaft. Now these are my new ones that I just got. These are Beeman ICS. This is a 500 spine arrow and I've been wanting to try these out for some time now. So big props to my nephew Jacob who works at an archery shop part-time. Picked me up three of these um, and I've been shooting them bare shaft just to tune my bow and make sure that I don't need to do anything to these arrows. They fly great. Now I'm running a 125 grain tip up front and this is just a standard insert for these arrows. So I, I don't have my 50 grain inserts like I do with my gold tips. But I wanted to personalize these and make these my own. And I've got a little design that I'm going to show you. And I'm going to show you how I apply that to the arrow. Now, the first and foremost, of course, you see that I have stripped off all the fletching. There's nothing left. And I have stripped off the Beeman logo, the little arrow wrap that comes on the arrow standard. Nothing against the, the wrap itself. It looked okay. I mean, it's, it was a nice design. And it says Beeman ICS on it. Uh, and it showed the spine weight of the arrows. But again, for what I wanted to do, I just wanted to get rid of all that. So let me set up, let me show you the cresting jig that I've actually made or the cresting machine that I have actually made. And I'll show you how I crest these arrows and how I seal them off and then they'll be ready for fletching. All right, so now we're going to set up to crest the arrows and we're gonna be cresting again my Beeman ICS 500s. So what I've done is I've actually made a cresting machine. Now you can buy these commercially. They're about a hundred bucks or a little more depending on what you get. Um, but again, and they're really nice machines, but if you want to build your own, I'm going to show you, tell you that this is very inexpensive to do. First and foremost, what you've got is a sewing machine motor. If you can see here, I picked this up on Amazon for $19 and it came with the foot pedal and power supply included. So that was a bonus. Again, $19 for a sewing machine motor. It doesn't have to be any name brand. And I don't think this one is a name brand. It's just a standard little motor, but it also comes with the mounting bracket. So I was able to mount that to my two by four here. The other piece that I had to buy was this, the on off switch, the on off dimmer switch, which is, uh, you can pick these up at Home Depot or Lowe's or any hardware supply store really for about $7. You don't have to buy an expensive one again. It's just going to serve a purpose to turn this motor on and adjust the speed. And you don't have to turn these wide open when you're using them, 
because it will sling paint everywhere. So again, being able to adjust your speed is really nice. That's why you have to get rid of the foot pedal because holding a constant speed is near impossible with the foot pedal. Great for sewing, not for cresting arrows. Everything else in the build is stuff that I had lying around from other projects that I've been doing. And I just, you know, laid it out, figured out what would work, how high to mount the motor, and then how high to make the arrow rest down here at the bottom. The other piece is just a little alligator clamp that I had lying around. And I just put some Velcro on the inside of that so the arrow would have less friction as it's spinning. Very simple, very easy to build. And you can do this in about a day. And again, it's not very expensive to make one of these. Now, to keep up with the patterns that I'm going to be using, I took another piece of scrap wood and I made just a little, a little piece that you can attach here to the base of the, the cresting machine. And once I decided on what pattern I wanted, I just drew the, the lines in. And the reason I did that is because you want it to be repeatable especially if you've got a design that you really like. You want to make sure that you can reproduce that with each and every arrow that you do. So that being said, that's taped on there. Now this is the design that I actually used for my gold tips that you've seen in some of my previous videos. I'm going to do a little bit different with the Beeman arrows today. I'm not going to paint on this white end that I've done with my gold tips. I'm going to you know, leave that part of it out, but I am going to use the same designs here on the pattern to paint in some white lines on the arrow. And again, you can see that it comes out really well. It does take a few tries to get it right and you do have to thin some of your paint. Uh, that was a lesson learned by me because if you don't thin it, it can go on a little bit gloppy, if you will, and give you some really weird looking spots. But when you're shooting them, you're really not gonna be paying attention to that anyway. So to attach the arrow to the motor, what I've done, let me see if I can show you this part of it. If you'll notice right here on the arrow, sh on the motor shaft itself, there's a little piece of tubing. This is just quarter inch tubing held on by some zip ties. This gives you a great snug fit for your arrow knocks, no matter what size you're using. They slip in there and you give it a little bit of push in there and then you just, it, it holds on as it's spinning. I mean, there's really nothing to that. So let's get one mounted in here and let's start the cresting on this arrow. So again, you want to take your clamp, we're just going to push the arrow in and there we go. As you can see, and there you go. Now this is going to spin the air. You're going to have to um, tinker with your um, speed a little bit because you want to get it to where you've got a consistent spin. You don't want it bouncing up and down. You don't want it going all kinds of crazy. And that's why, you know, that's the advantage to buying one of the more expensive models is you don't get that, that arrow bounce. Uh, but this does work really well. So let me get my pattern set on here. I'll show you some of the paints that I'm using and we will get this arrow crested and ready to go. Now for paints, all I'm using is testers paint. This is acrylic enamel paint that you can pick up at any Hobby Lobby or any supply store where you can buy paint. And I'm using some uh, paint thinner. The paint thinner is not for the black, it's more for the white. The white you really need to thin out just a little, not much, but that gives you a smoother finish with the white and it actually gives you a lot better result as you're painting it on your arrow. For brushes, I just picked up an assortment. These actually came, the white brushes here actually came with the kit that I picked up, which has about 10 different colors in it. And I've got those over in a box over there, but you know, you can paint your arrows any color you want with just the $10 uh, tester paint kit. Then I picked up some other arrow, or not, I keep saying arrows, excuse me. Then I picked up some other uh, paint brushes as you can see here. A couple of different widths. I've been painting with uh, red with this one. You can tell it's stained a little bit. I've got this one. And then I have this little fine paintbrush here. This is for pinstripes and for separating your colors. And I'll show you why that one's important as we get into the cresting of this arrow. All right, so I've got my little white paint mixed up here. A little bit of thinner. You don't have to put too much. I may have a little bit too much in that, but I think it's gonna be okay. So we're gonna be using the 
small brush here to paint on the design. So I have this lined up based on where I was cresting with the gold tip arrows. And that is the edge of the paper just to this edge right here, if you can see that. <clears throat> Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit on this so you can see a little bit better of what I'm doing as I do the cresting. All right, so I think we're good now. So we wanna go ahead and get our machine going. You just want a good spin. You don't want it to be too fast. You don't want it to be too erratic. And you're gonna load up your paint. I'm gonna take here where I've got this design drawn out. And you just wanna be able to get it to start. You don't have to be perfect with it. You're just laying down the initial design. And as it spins, of course, it's going to dry. Once you get the initial design, you just want to come back in and fill in any of the little bare spots. That's why it's important to thin out this white paint because if you don't, it does get gloppy. It just looks bad. You're going to notice the motor speed up and slow down. I'm not sure why it does that. It's probably just the switch or the current coming into it, but that's okay. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want to fill in any of the, the darker spots. And that's just a matter of um, going back over as it spins. It's drying, so you'll be able to touch up those spots. overall I might be happy with that so that's what we've got yeah as you can see it's a little bit I need to smooth that out just a little bit now don't be worried if the lines are not exactly perfect all the way around because I'm going to show you something that I do that actually makes that look a lot better so what I want to do is I want to add a little bit more paint onto this I'm not I'm not happy with the coverage I've got here I think I'm good with that. <clears throat> All right. Now that I'm happy with. It's a little bit better. Looks a lot better, a lot more consistent throughout. So let me take some of this paint off my brush. Now, <clears throat> what I was telling you before is these lines are not going to be perfect. You're going to see that there's going to be a little bit of, of dipping here and there. Uh, and that's okay because we can fix that. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Now, this is the design I'm choosing for this, these beam and arrows. And I'm really happy with this. Plain, simple. And once I put my fletching on, uh, I think it's going to look really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little small paintbrush that I got, my little pinstripe brush, and we're going to take some black. Now, this has been drying for a little bit as it's spinning. Uh, the thin paint's actually going to dry. You don't have to thin out the black um, because you're going to be uh, using it. You want it to come out a little bit thicker on the arrow itself. Uh, it would help if I would get the paint off my fingers. All right. So now, like I was saying, you're going to have these spots where it looks like it's doing this. It's dipping in and out. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean that up, give it a, give it a finished, polished look, and bring those lines into a more consistent um, look and feel, if you will. I'm 
and load up our brush. And that's why these little fine tip uh, brushes are important to get. They don't hold a lot of paint, so you're going to have to continue to And there you go. I am happy with the result that I have with that. And like I said, I said I can get this in focus here. A clean, simple design. You see how I cleaned up the edges of those of the white paint there, the white cresting, with the little black pen stripe. Now you could use whatever color you wanted to to do something like this, and you can get as crazy with your design as you want to with as many different colors. I, again, I like this plain, simple look, and I, I, I really like that design. I just like the way that looks. I wish this would focus a lot quicker, but you can see uh, clean, simple. The lines look neat. That's why it's important, like I was telling you just a second ago, to get you a little pinstripe brush. And then all you're going to do is you're going to let that dry for a few minutes, and we're going to go out and we're going to seal these up so they're ready for fletching. So to finish out the arrow cresting, what I'm going to do, because at the beginning I actually had to sand these down to get rid of the logo, get rid of all the glue from the previous plastic fletchings that came on this. So I want to reseal this and make it look neat, and then I want to protect the paint that I've actually put on here. Now the paint itself, the acrylic, it'll dry and it's pretty tough. You won't be able to, it won't come off just in normal shooting. But again, I want to seal these up and make them look nice. So what I've got is just some Rust-Oleum Satin Clear. I find the satin works well. Now this is just a theory of mine. I think if you were to use gloss that it would cause some adhesion problems with the fletching glue. I'm not real sure. Again, that's a theory. I don't take that as gospel. But the satin, I feel, works really well. And it doesn't make them like Ugh, real shiny in the sunlight. So let's go ahead and get this squared away. And you don't want to go too heavy on this. You just want to do light coats, let it dry for a second, add another little light coat. And it's not going to take a lot to reseal, especially where you sanded off the logo and the glue. So let me go ahead and do that. Again, spin it as you're doing it. And you can see it's starting to shine up really nice. Starting to look like it was factory like that. <laughs> But again, very simple. I'm going to let this dry for a second. I'm going to add another coat, and then we're going to go back in, and I'll show you one that I've already completed. I like that. I love that design. Plain, simple, easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. Now, of course, you want to tape up your, tape up your knock, or you can pull it out completely if you want to. Taping works just as well. Um, again, nice design. I'm really enjoying that, that design. Let me start doing some of my other arrows like that as well. Now this doesn't affect your arrow flight either. It doesn't affect anything at all. Uh, you just want to let it dry and be ready for your fletching. So there you go. Let's see if I can get that in focus. Very nice. I love that design. Just that. And you can see how the little black pinstripe actually cleaned that up a great deal. Uh, especially the the white bands on there and again you could do that any color you wanted to really good i like that all right so let's go back in and i'll show you one that i've completed that is ready to shoot and uh, we'll call this video good there you go a fun simple little project now do you have to do cresting on your arrows to be traditional or trad no you don't it's just a fun little project something that i like to do i like to tinker i like to build stuff i like to 
push my limits and see what I can actually do. Now, the reason I did this is because I watched a lot of videos about cresting your arrows and I was like, man, that's really awesome. I want to do it myself. And that's why I did it. So this is going to dry again, this satin finish on here. I think it leaves a, a surface that's, you know, I don't want to say optimal for gluing on fletchings, but it does. I've not had an issue with it. Let's put it that way. And I've done all my gold tip arrows like that. Uh, with no issue of fletchings coming off or glue uh, not adhering to that. So let me show you the one that I actually got together already and is ready to just about shoot. I want to let the fletchings dry a bit more. Not really ready to put that one through the arrow just yet, but there you go. Once you add your fletchings in, let me see if I can get up here a little bit closer so you can see this. Once you get your fletchings in, uh, I'm using gateway feathers. These are four inch parabolic feathers. Um, I've not had any uh, complaints about these feathers whatsoever. Every now and then I get a weird one where it just the tip, the very tip of the feather wants to kind of curve and doesn't want to adhere well. But, you know, you can work around that. You just have to be patient with your fletching. Make sure that you let it stay in the jig long enough. But there you go. Check that out. Really cool. Makes it your own personalization. Again, you don't have to do this. It doesn't affect your, it doesn't affect your aeroflight. doesn't improve your aeroflight. doesn't improve the speed has nothing to do with performance whatsoever. This is just something to while away the time if you've got the time to do something like this. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief little video uh, about cresting your arrows, making them your own. It's a fun project. And again, not expensive to do. Um, I always try to do everything as inexpensive as possible. That way I get more enjoyment out of it. And if it's something that I find that I just don't like to do, then I don't have to say, oh, I just sunk all this money <laughs> into this project. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this brief little video. I hope it's given you some inspiration to possibly go out and, you know, build you a cresting jig or buy one and crest your own arrows. Again, it's a fun project. Personalize, make them your own. Thank you again to my new subscribers. Thank you to all my subscribers. I appreciate it. Now I was thinking I'm at 200 subscribers right now. And as we near that 300 mark, I want to do possibly a giveaway. So I'm going to be thinking about what I can do to give back to the community at large. And, and as we grow and as we get bigger, of course, we'll be doing different things because I'm going to be testing a lot of different equipment here, a lot of different bows. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm not going to need personally that maybe I could give back to the community. So thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I do appreciate your uh, feedback. I do appreciate your comments. If you like the content that you see, please consider subscribing to my channel hit the notifications, hit that thumbs up, come back and join me next time. And thank you so much. Have a great day, a better day tomorrow, and a wonderful week ahead of you. And until next time.